Right, this is, um, I'll call it part one, this is Sheila's visit to East Orchard. Um, just to do a bit of scanning because you never know what you're going to find. And I ha uh, later on I have come across East Orchard with people in it. And um, so it's always worthwhile making note of things. So here we go. Right, this is side B. This is Sheila on her visit on the 30th of June to Dorset in search of Daisy and Amber and Harry and Sandy's ancestors. And I've been to a number of villages as recorded on side A. I've now just turned up and passed by pure chance East Orchard Church. I've just taken a photo of it. There looks to be a number of graves in here. There's also a little bench and I'm going to have my orange and banana in a minute. I'll just work my way up to the church and do some of the graves en route. As we found you know, a number of things today. What have we got in here? We got, I don't even know if there's any more. Yeah, Richard Francis, who died in 1938, age 51. That's the first grave on the left-hand side if you come in. First visible one. And there, the colour plaque is bad here. Very bad, you can't read hardly anything. Bennett, there's another grave there. Somebody Bennett. That was quite a nice little find just before we thought it was going to be too early to go sit in the caravan. For a... But I have been up since five o'clock and I've hardly slept all night. Oh, guess what I found? This is worth a picture. In something remembrance of John Thomas Bustable who died May the 2nd, 1918, aged 59. Bye will be done. I'll take a picture. This is East Orchard. And the Bastables are in the family tree. What I've been trying to do is get graves from each church I've been in, really, as a record. Um, they could be related. Sometimes they are related. Sometimes they're not. There's a Harry Hunt here, who died 1903, age 37, and Elizabeth Eleanor, wife of the above, who died 1935, age 90. I think he was 37. He could have been 87. Oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell when the bits are missing. Who's this here? Um, Robert somebody. I can't tell. James Hunt, who died 1866, aged 87 and Elizabeth his wife who died 18 something 69 that's not very clear but of course there are hunts related to Sandy's family oh this is much bigger than the West Orchard one there's a Lemon family Thomas and Eliza Lemon that's right below the church facing the church Alright, well, I'll do. I'll see if the church is open. Uh, just before you go in, though, the church on the right, you've got a Douglas Bowden, born 1906, died 19 something. Yeah. We might find more yet. So I'm going into the porch way. No, 
Yeah, this one's locked. That's a shame, isn't it? This one's locked. And then the rest are a bit... A lot of them are in very tall grass. And they've been tested. That means they've had... Some of them have had their crosses removed. I mean, they're not doing any harm to anyone here, are they? A lot of these, you can't read them. They've been knocked down. Jordan Richard Shute, who died 1916. I think age 60, I think. That's not... It's got three plinths and George. Frederick. I don't say his other name, but he could be a Shute as well. Yeah, there's a Mary Shute following this line along. Graves. Um, George Frederick Shute. And Christian, somebody Shute. And then another George Frederick Shute, who died in 1948, aged 12. I don't know what you're going to find here in this long grass, though. Could be snakes or anything. Oh, it's very bushy here. Stanley Mervyn Shute died in 18... no. It's about 1952, age 54, and Rachel Victoria Shute. She was 71 when she died in 1872. Yeah, he died in 1852. That's very big Shute population here. And Lucy Annie Upfield, Nee Dennis, well that's interesting, who died 1938, age 55, because there's Dennis's in the family as well. Ah, oh, here's a Dennis there, in loving memory of... John Charles Dennis, who died May the 20th, 1913, age 65, and also of, could be Mary. Mary. I can't read that, but it's his wife anyway. Winifred Rossiter, Nee Crooks, 1908, 2002. Very lumpy around here. There's an old shed as well in there. Old creepy shed. I'm going around the back now. I'm going to have my banana in a minute. Oh, there's more graves around here. What have we got here? Benny Stokes, 72 when he died, in 1972, and Mabel, died in 1975, age 80. More Stokes. That is Mary Abbott, 75 when she died, in 1968, and... I don't know what that says. Heartgrove. Something or other. Yeah, some. Do you know what? It's really hot. I'm baking. The sun is pouring down on me. There's loads of graves in here. Some of these might be. Somebody. Somebody brown. Didn't expect this bit. Alice Mary Gillett, 1889 to 1973. Emily Frances Lerfor. Oh, I'm bloody hot. It's bacon. Frances Quinton Sainsbury, 
had 97 to 71. Oh, I don't know what you're treading on when you... I love in memory of William. Oh, I don't know what that says. And Louisa anyway. There's a brown Elizabeth. Look. Could be Eli Brown. Beloved wife of Eli Brown. Fanny. She died in 1938, age 88. Also Eli Brown. He died September 21st, 1939, age 74. So that's a brown. There's loads more graves under this long grass. Quite hazardous as well. Oh, I'm so hot. Oh, bloody hell. It's bacon. It's a real hot summer's night. There's a couple little ones under there. And bird, it looks like. So I've walked right round the church. There's still some graves I haven't done yet. So this is East Orchard where I am now. There's some little plaques as well. There's a right. I'm going to continue this tape on part five of she or part two. I don't think it would be of um, my visit to East Orchard. Over and out for now. Sheila 2023 just adding a little extra note to the video of an Eliza Blanche Bastable who murdered her mother in the village of East Orchard. Um, Eliza was born in 1852 her father was George a dairy farmer her mother was Elizabeth a dressmaker and she was one of eight children she even went to boarding school she had a good education she trained as a teacher she was traumatized when one of her sisters died of tb in 1870 and she started getting a bit disturbed um she did enter an asylum at Bristol called Bislington for a while um and received various ther therapies but then she came home after a year but she was still very depressed apparently and one day her brother came home called James and put a loaded shotgun on the table after he'd been out hunting. Apparently Eliza picked it up, followed her mother out into the garden, who was taking a cup of tea to her father George, and shot her mother at the back of the head and killed her. So um, Eliza was eventually um, went to court and she had to go to Broadmoor where she died. Her family are remembered in the graveyard at East Orchard they didn't want her joining them in the cemetery so she was buried at Broadmoor. She thought um, her mother, for some reason she shut her mother, she, she, she didn't believe her mother was dead, told her to get up and all that sort of thing. Um, but she said she, she was tied up with um, thoughts of wickedness and evil and um, Anyway, she died in the end herself of TB, aged 27, in 1880, and she's buried at St. John's Church, Crowthorn. Her father did not arrange for her to be moved back to the village where they lived. Um, Winchell Farm, East Orchard, was owned by her father, George William Bastable. So this is just a little bit I've added I only found this out yesterday while searching for various pictures um, to add to the tape recording because I, I didn't actually take a lot at the time in 2008 because in those days we just had instamatic cameras with 26 shots on them so sometimes it only take about six photos unlike today when we can take hundreds if we want to and we've got better cameras as well. I thought I'd just add that story because I will be looking more into this family um, who are quite likely related to the Bastable family that I've been researching 
um, it was a very close community. All these villages were very near to each other, like West Orchard just up the road as well. And I have included some pictures of that here. Um, unbeknown to me that day, when I sat in that graveyard and had my back on the bench, um, that there had been a local murder, that these people, her murdered mother, Elizabeth, was buried very close to me. There is a gravestone, apparently as well. So that's the end of this tape. Part two will follow shortly.